Hey everyone, Zach here, back again with another texture tutorial. This is part two, and today we're going to go through how I add textures to get realistic breakup on materials. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, we're texturing this bike modeled by Josh Doherty. In part one, we went through how I set up materials inside of Mari. I shared a free template that's going to speed up how you set up your project, so go check it out. If you have no idea how to use Mari, I made a full tutorial going through how you can use Mari from start to finish to learn how to texture an asset to industry standards. So in this part, we're going to be using textures that I've made. After working in the industry for a few years, I always struggle to find textures that are high resolution, but most importantly, look natural. These are actual scanned textures that I made with my hands. And what separates these from procedurally generated textures that you can make in Substance, for example, is these have all the subtleties and randomness of real life. The more elements from the real world you can add in your textures, the more realistic they're gonna look. There are smudges, scratches, dust masks, soft imperfections to break up color, but my absolute favorite textures to use are the grunges. I use them for everything. To add spec breakup, adding micro bumps onto surfaces, and I use them to build masks for layering materials. We'll talk about building masks in the next video, but for now, we're gonna break up the surfaces. But let's just focus on one material at a time. Let's start with the steel. I'm connecting up just the steel material to the shader. and we'll control double click this green material node to jump inside. We're gonna just paint the basic maps, color, spec roughness, and bump. Things like anisotropic will add in look dev. With all my materials, I like to add different textures of different frequencies. So I'll start off with a high frequency scratch map. You won't really read this from a file, but as you get closer, it will look complex. I'm screening this in the spec roughness. Then I'll bring it up to the diff color. We'll invert it and multiply the scratches so it reduces the spec where the scratches are. The great thing about using these imperfections maps is you can be as subtle as you like just by mixing the opacity in and out. I can then multiply the scratches in the bump. Next, I'll add a grunge map. This is gonna undulate the spec roughness and break up that CG highlight. I'll then invert the map and decrease the spec in the grungy areas. I'll then take the grunge and screening and spec roughness. and screen it in the bump just to add high frequency detail onto the surface. Next, some low frequency scratches. Again, same drill, multiplying the diffuse color and screening in the spec roughness.
The details we've added so far are great, but we need to think about how the edges are going to react. With this steel, I want to affect the edges of the geometry. I have this gizmo I made. It's using just one curvature map that I baked out, and I'm using a texture from my imperfections map to add breakup. I know my extension pack has wear and tear smart masks. I think they look great, but I find sometimes they require baking it down into one paint node in order to keep Mari running fast. So I made this edge wear gizmo. It's not very intensive and only has a couple of sliders to get the look you want. To use the edge wear gizmo, simply import your curvature map and import it in as a geo channel. Add a geo channel node and set it to curve. Now you have art directable edge wear live in Mari. Let's copy and paste this edge wear. Invert it in the diffuse and reduce the spec. Next we can take the edge wear. Invert it and multiply it to make the edges shinier and more polished. Materials go to the next level when you start to add geometric based variation. It also has controls to hero paint in and out areas where the edge wear isn't working. The mask is built in the middle of the layer stack so as you paint in and out it interactively grades the texture to realistically fade the mask with no soft textures. I prefer to use this because if I want to use a smart mask, a bake out of substance for example, and want to remove it in areas, I'll simply just be fading the opacity. And unless you're using a really hard brush, you probably end up with soft textures and we don't want soft textures. Next is the paint. Control double click to go inside the material. I'm going to start off with some low frequency smudges. I love this map because it has smudge marks, fingerprints, some dust and random hair fibers. I'm screening this in the spec roughness. Let's add some high frequency scratches. It's paint, so it's had mud and the elements adding micro scratches all over the surface. You know the drill, we're going to invert and multiply to put them in the bump. Now I want to add some grunge across the surface. Let's screen it to add some interest in the spec. I'm checking against my reference to make sure I don't overdo it. Let's screen the same map in the bump to add some high frequency details onto the surface.
again some geometric variation. Let's copy and paste our Edgeware Gizmo and roughen up the edges just by screening it in the spec roughness. It adds some nice breakup. Let's keep it subtle though. The rest of the steps are pretty much rinse and repeat on the rest of the materials. They're all using pretty much the same textures or with the multiply and screen functions. If you wanted to pick this gizmo up, I'll include it within my texture pack and whenever I create new gizmos, I will keep them updated on Gumroad as well. So I just want to give my two cents on why I'm using Mari over Substance in this example. Because I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, why isn't he just using Substance Painter? Well, I have a few reasons, and I don't really want to get into the Mari versus Substance debate because I'm a strong believer in it doesn't really matter what tool you use. Knowing the fundamentals is the most important thing. I love Substance, I think the smart masks and smart materials are great. But what I would say is if you learn how to texture by dragging and dropping pre-made smart masks and smart materials, you'll only ever learn how to load presets and smart masks in substance. Ultimately, you'll neglect learning the fundamentals of texturing. For high-end visual effects, every aspect along the process needs to be art directable. And for me, using Mari teaches you how to texture. The reason I say this is because when you open vanilla Mari, it comes with no template. It requires you to know how to texture in order to make something look good. Whereas with Substance Painter, you can import a model, make some utility maps, drag and drop some presets, and generally you will have some nice looking textures off the bat. I'm not saying you can't learn how to texture inside of Substance Painter. I'm saying when you're learning how to texture, being able to make masks and materials from scratch are the key fundamentals required to being a good texture artist. So it probably goes without saying, I'm not sponsored by the Foundry. These are just my opinions from someone who uses the software. So too long didn't read. To be a good texture artist, know how to make masks and materials from scratch. That's my little mini ramble over. If you agree or disagree with me, that's cool. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Again, these are just my approaches to texturing and they certainly aren't the only or best way. It's simply just to demonstrate an example of building something from scratch. If you like this video and you wanna see more, subscribe so you know when I release the next video. And in the next part, we're gonna go over how to add dirt, dust, rust, and oil drips to take this bike to the next level. I'm gonna leave you now and time lapse the rest. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.